hey, Providence people, it's Monday, April 6th already, and we've survived a week. Hey, hallelujah. Last time I talked to you about Bernoulli principle, I'd like to remind you of what we learned. The Bernoulli principle says if you can get a fluid, that would be uh, a liquid or a gas, to be forced through a narrowing. then it will cause it to flow faster. And when it flows faster, it does not exert as much pressure. The second way you can see the Bernoulli principle is to get it to flow over a curvature. The narrowing is called the venturi. And the curvature, the application is aerodynamic lift. One thing I didn't uh, tell you last time is that this is an airplane. And that the force pulling down on an airplane is called gravity. And the force pulling up on the airplane is called lift. And the reason that lift occurs is because there's curvature on the top of the wing. The force pulling forward because of the engines is called thrust. And the pull force pulling backward is called drag. These are opposing forces, lift versus gravity, thrust versus drag. Now I've made you into a bunch of pilots. Isn't that great? So let's talk about that narrowing. Do you remember a blue, a blue in this? And that fluid in the middle came up because there's low pressure as it goes through that narrow part right there. That's a venturi tube. And it caused a low pressure when I blew a fluid through there. I'm gonna give you a bunch of applications today and we're gonna finish the chapter, isn't that great? First of all, there was this thing called underway replenishment when I was in the Navy. So here's a tanker or a supply ship of some kind. And here comes another Navy ship and pulls alongside the supply ship. When it does, <clears throat> they're steaming together, but they don't steam together like this. They steam together like this. They keep going in the same direction, but their nose is pointing outward. And what that is, the reason for that is because the uh, water flowing between them like this creates the Venturi effect, creates a low pressure area, which wants to suck these ships together. So they always have to point their rudder outward. So they've got a force going outward to compensate for the force pulling them inward. It's really a funny thing to see. Now there's another application. If you drive a motorcycle alongside, let's just say you're driving a motorcycle down the highway and the 18 wheeler comes alongside and pulls up and passes you. You know what's gonna happen? You're gonna feel a real strong pull toward the, motor, uh, the 18 wheeler as he passes you. If you're on a multi-lane highway, and you're driving down the highway like that together, you're gonna to feel that force pulling against you. So be careful. Now, uh, I'm gonna show you uh, applications of the Bernoulli principle. The Bernoulli principle, I'm talking about the curvature, aerodynamic lift. And you guys remember that I showed you the balloon and I said, what happens when you hit the balloon from the side? goes that way. But what if you blow a stream of uh, air down the side? It goes like that. That's called aerodynamic lift. Because I explained, if you can get that fluid to flow faster, which it does on the other side, then that means the other side is pushing uh, with greater uh, pressure against. So the airplane has got wings that are curved on the top. And it wasn't because the Wright Brothers airplane was made out of balsa wood. 
it was because it had curvature on the top of that balsa. They bent those wings. And so it created that aerodynamic lift. Another example of that might be a ping pong ball with a blow, with a blow dryer. There's a uh, Bernoulli principle over here and one over here. There's a low pressure area sucking the ball that way, and there's a low pressure area sucking the ball that way. And so they compensate, they cancel each other out. I'm going to turn it off. Goodbye, ball. By the way, maybe I didn't have it up high enough. I bet I didn't have it up high enough and you didn't get to see it. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and blow air down. Yeah, that's better. Let's start over here. Now a little low. Okay, there you go. Really principle. I love that principle. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you a couple more examples. Well, hopefully, you're not getting tired of these. I can go right over there, right with a different color. Uh, let's see. When a guy throws a curveball on the baseball team, of course, you know why. I had my orthoscopic surgery in my right arm. It's because when I was 45, I retired from the Navy and I became a teacher and a baseball coach. And I threw too much bat in practice and I didn't warm up my arm. And so there you have it. That's why I had my arthroscopic surgery. Let that be a lesson to you. So anyway, when the baseball is thrown, it's twisted. And if I twist it like this, if I want a curveball and I twist it, let me get back here. If I twist it like this, it's going to curve down. If I twist it like this, it's going to curve up. If I twist it like this, it's going to curve in that direction. It turns, it curves towards the direction of the twist. If I curve it like that, it's going to bring out like that. And the reason is because when you throw the ball forward and you spin it downward, okay? Now, when the ball is going forward, we can pretend like the ball is stationary and the air is coming at it. Really, the ball is flying through the air, but you can pretend like it's stationary and the air is coming at it, like this. Now, these reinforce one another, so it goes faster. And the air goes faster down there on the bottom of the ball because it's spinning toward that area. And so there's motion here and there's motion there, which means it goes faster, which means it creates a low pressure area, which means that the ball spins, the, meat, the ball uh, curves down. So it curves in the direction of the spin because of the Bernoulli principle. Now, let me ask you this question. You have any idea what this is right here? You got it. It's a uh, an umbrella. That's Mary Poppins' umbrella. You know, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. That, that one. Okay. And so, do you remember at the end of the show, she went, I think it was a city park. She went up into the sky. Well, that was not a miracle. That was simply the Bernoulli principle. Because that particular day, if you watch the film, it was a windy day. And the wind was blowing over her umbrella, making the air move faster. And when it moved faster, it created a low pressure area up here and it caused the higher pressure down there to push that umbrella up right along with Mary Poppins. Aren't you glad I explained that to you? How about the shower curtain? Which way does the shower curtain go? Unless you're a rich person and you don't have to have a curtain, you got a door, but I got a curtain. Okay, anyway, so my shower curtain, you know, goes like this. It's curved. And when that fluid comes down, the warm uh, air, the warm water vapor comes up 
and it flows over that curvature of that uh, shower curtain. And the shower curtain always pulls in toward me. It isn't because I have such a magnetic personality, it's because of the Bernoulli principle. Those are some examples of how it works out in everyday life. Viscosity is the resistance of fluid to flowing. I'm on page 446. 446. Viscosity is the resistance of a fluid to flowing. See the syrup pouring over the pancakes? If you had that syrup in the uh, refrigerator, would it pour more slowly? Yeah. And the reason is because when the liquid, when the thing is tipped over and the liquid on the top of the bottle begins to flow, it's pulling the mass on the bottom of the bottle as well. Now, some of those particles of some fluids uh, adhere with one another so well that they have what you call a high viscosity. Uh, that means that they resist flowing. Uh, ketchup, for example, has a higher viscosity than, than the syrup. And when I do my oil change, the viscosity of the oil is rated. They might have a 10 weight oil or a 30 weight oil. And the way I remember this is the higher the SAE rating, SAE 30, uh means you use it in higher temperature and the sae 10 you use it in lower temperature because 10 has a lower viscosity which means and if the temperature is colder then the colder air kind of takes that thin oil and makes it a little bit more thick and in the hot of the summer you want to use an sae 30 or a 40 because it has higher viscosity and therefore the heat of the summer thins it down a little bit. And so in both cases, they end up being the, the right uh, thickness or density or flow that you want in that car. Okay, that's the end of uh, chapter 14. So hallelujah, right? Now, let me ask you a question. Do you, do you watch every one of these videos? I hope so because I'm just knocking myself out trying to make it interesting for you. And I would even like to, for you to invite your parent to watch this one, because I think this one is rather clever, if I don't say so myself. Okay, see ya.